safe sushi and safe sex. Two topics that never fail to make people uncomfortable. You see, it's all about balancing the pleasure and the risks. Of course, in a country based on Puritan ideals, we have conflicting feelings about pleasure. Authorities, like FDA, recommend a path of complete abstinence from raw fish. Of course, teaching abstinence has never worked that well with either sex or food, so I'd like to propose an alternative. Why don't we try to understand the risks and then work on minimizing them? To serve raw fish safely at home, we need to understand two risks – bacteria and parasites. When the fish dies, bacteria starts decomposing its flesh and multiplying very quickly. But bacteria growth can be minimized by bleeding and gutting the fish immediately after death and storing it on ice. As the temperature drops, bacteria growth drops exponentially. Exposing the fish flesh to air introduces new bacteria, so you want to fillet the fish as close to serving raw as possible. To ensure that these conditions are met, buy your fish from a high-end fishmonger who has a good turnover and who is comfortable answering your questions. Ask when was the fish filleted. If the answer is today, you're in good hands. But please don't panic if the fish came to the store a few days ago. Whole fish can last very well on ice. If you want to eat the fish raw, I suggest you do so within 24 hours after purchase. Keep the fish between ice packs as soon as it's in your possession, even in the car and in your fridge. Now, let's talk about parasites. Although the kingdom of marine parasites is extremely diverse, the only three you need to worry about are cudworm, anisakis, and tapeworm. Those can live in mammals, which is you. The other ones can't, so they're harmless. The fish that are prone to these three parasite species should not be consumed raw, at least not without freezing. Of particular concern are freshwater fish and Pacific fish, like wild salmon. The incidence of parasites in some of these fish is as high as 90%. The most common cases of parasite infection that I hear about anecdotally is recreational fishermen eating the wild salmon that they catch raw super fresh right on the boat. No bacteria risk, but a huge parasite risk. When it comes to Atlantic fish, tapeworm is not such a big issue, but cudworm and anisakis are. You can see those with a naked eye if you know what to look for. Here is cudworm crawling out of monkfish. Now that I've ruined fish for you, let me assure you that not all is lost. Among wild denizens of the seas, tuna, scallops, and oysters are free from tapeworm, cudworm, and anisakis. Farm-raised fish that are aquacultured in huge pools versus the ocean are completely parasite-free. This includes Arctic char and branzino, also known as Mediterranean bass. Farm-raised salmon is raised in cages in the ocean. Whether these fish pose a parasite risk or not depends on how the farm is set up. And since that's not always easy to find out, it is best to freeze farm-raised salmon before eating it raw. Wrap it tightly in plastic, place in the freezer bag and freeze. Seven days in the home freezer is sufficient to kill parasites. To defrost, move it to the fridge 24 hours before serving. I know what you're thinking. Can't we just freeze all fish? Well, in sushi restaurants, most fish is previously frozen, but they have a freezing technology that doesn't allow water to crystallize. This prevents fish from turning mushy. Freezing halibut, fluke, and most other white fish in a home freezer completely destroys their texture. But farm-raised salmon freezes quite well because it's fatty. Oh, and by the way, the freezer section in your supermarket is not a good option for raw consumption. Although the parasites in those fish are long dead, bacteria are not. Freezing only pauses bacteria growth, but does not kill bacteria. Most of those fish have been through a lot of transportation. In some cases, they have been frozen and defrosted numerous times. 
even if they were safe to eat. The texture would be mushy and the flavor dull. If you like your fish cured in acid or salt, like ceviche and gravlax, keep in mind that unlike heat, acid and salt do not kill parasites. So the same precautions that apply to raw fish apply to cured fish. Now that we know all about the risk and how to keep it small, let's talk about the pleasure. By next week, I'll defrost my salmon and will show you how to slice it for sashimi, nigiri and crudo. For more culinary topics, appetizing or not, don't forget to subscribe to Helen's Kitchen channel. And if you're ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.